What is nano? Let's get a good idea. Think of two rocks, a rock that you hold in your hand and the planet Earth. And technology has advanced so far that that's the kind of scale that we're dealing with with modern day nanotechnology. It blows the mind to think of little nano robots, little devices too small to be seen inside your body monitoring your vital signs, detecting early signs of disease, and delivering drugs where it matters, attacking the bad cells without harming the good cells, a monumental step forward in the fight against disease. Today, we're gonna to give an introduction to nanotechnology. We'll go through some background and we'll talk about challenges, promises, and how this technology will revolutionize the world of healthcare. Now, I'd like to talk a bit about scale so we have a better idea of really the dimensions and the scale of what we're talking about here with nanotechnology. And first, I'd like to start off with my own experience working with medical products out in industry. Now, commercially available devices that are pretty common. Keep in mind that this is a mature industry. There have been clearances, approvals for many years out there for these types of devices. Now, the outer diameter of some of these products are about a hundredth of an inch. That's about two hundredths of a centimeter or about 0.2 millimeters, a millimeter being the millimeter that you see on a ruler, that you can see it with the visible, with the, the naked eye, okay? A millimeter. So then that would be about one-tenth or a quarter of a millimeter that you'd see on the ruler. And as I said, you know, that's, that's visible, okay?
Now, there are many attributes and other features on those devices that are invisible to the naked eye. And a lot of that activity, a lot of the inspections and related activities are done under magnification. They're done using electron microscopy. And you see very commonly, you hear about the equipment being qualified, EM equipment, as an example, electron microscopy equipment being qualified as part of the process and features that are invisible to the naked eye. Keep in mind that there's a thousand microns or a thousand micrometers in a millimeter, the millimeter that you can see on a ruler. Okay, so we're at about 200 microns right now. Now, if you cut that more or less in half, you have a human hair. So that's where we are, standard commercially available devices. You get maybe 70 to 100 microns on average, more or less. And of course, we all know that we can see human hairs with the naked eye. Okay, so that's around 70 to 100. However, once we go just a bit further, once we go to about 40 or 50 microns, we get to a level where we can no longer see it with the naked eye, okay? And as you can see, we're not very far away. Right now, standard commercially available products are not very far from there, you know? In fact, only a factor of 10, and we're into the area of the invisible. Okay, we go past the 40 to 50 microns, and then we start getting into the cellular level, okay? Just beyond the cusp of what we can see, maybe say 20 to 30 microns or so, we start seeing cells, like human cells as an example, more or less, right? Maybe 20 to 30 or so, we start seeing cells just beyond what we can see. And human cells can go all the way down to maybe say six or eight microns for red blood cells, okay? Again, confirming that a thousand microns are in the millimeter that we can see, okay? So this isn't very far away from that cusp, okay? Now, in terms of technology that's available, I already spoke a bit about how it's standard practice to work, to do inspections and related activities under microscopy. We're very familiar. This is, this is pretty common stuff on in industry right now, okay? Now, if you get in the area of electronics, now the precision that's being incorporated in electronics right now is, is simply amazing in my view, that in some cases, and we have these types of, of, uh, of products, microchips, you know, in our phones and in our electronics, that's the degree of precision that we're doing right now. If we want to do semi-automated, semi-automated tolerances can go all the way down to a micron or two or even less which is really amazing. Because keep in mind that six to eight is your red blood cells. Then we're getting to the point of a bacterium. So we're now working at the tolerances that we're able to shake hands with bacteria right now. But that's what we're doing. Keeping in mind that you have a bacteria of more or less, maybe two microns or so. And keep in mind that there's a thousand microns again in a millimeter, the millimeter that we can see with a naked eye on the ruler, okay? So as I stated before, we're not very far away. We are so close to that area right now. Now from here, we get into one micron, two microns or so. Now how it's defined by various agencies, by various third parties, certification bodies, et cetera. Now, as listed in guidance documents, as an example, 
like in FDA guidance, normally the FDA guidance, they speak of, if you have a product that has a dimension anywhere from one to 100 nanometers, that would qualify as nanotechnology. Now keep in mind that we have a thousand nanometers in a micron and a thousand microns in a millimeter, okay? So we're getting to the extreme now. And when we're talking about one or two microns, the tolerances that we're doing in electronics right now, we're definitely getting into the nanotechnology level now. Okay. So hopefully that'll give you a decent idea of how this all, how this all works, how this all comes together. Now I'd like to talk a bit about, about uses, about uses in medicine. And I've already touched on this a bit before. However, keep in mind that this technology is really alive and well right now, that some of the devices that I've mentioned before, as I said, that these are you know, standard commercially available products where these devices travel through the circulatory system, treating different ailments, treating different conditions throughout the body. It can be involved in cardiac tissue repair. An application I found really interesting is nano pacemakers, as an example. Pacemakers that are so small, they're the size of a quarter of a grain of rice in medicine. And I've already touched on this a bit before. However, keep in mind that this technology is really alive and well right now, that some of the devices that I've mentioned before, as I said, that these are you know, standard commercially available products where these devices travel through the circulatory system, treating different ailments, treating different conditions throughout the body. It can be involved in cardiac tissue repair. An application I found really interesting is nano pacemakers, as an example. Pacemakers that are so small, they're the size of a quarter of a grain of rice in medicine. Now, I'd like to talk a bit about where we're going, government regulation, how governments and other third parties are viewing nanotechnology, and really where the industry is heading. Now, in my experience in working with agencies and working with third parties, it's interesting to see that through webinars, seminars, and working with these different third parties, really the position that third parties and agencies have. Now, in my experience from what I've seen, it seems like you know, agencies and third parties more or less have more of a, a neutral position on this right now. As an example, as stated in FDA guidance, that the FDA doesn't categorically judge these types of products and this type of technology, okay? It doesn't see nanotechnology as intrinsically, as they say, benign or harmful, okay? The FDA and other third parties, now, they have been regulating products in the area of nanotechnology under existing requirements, existing policy in accordance with, with you know, the, the, the standards, the current standards that are, that are applicable. And also I want to note that as the FDA has specified in guidance that nanotechnology being an emerging industry, being something new, that in applying current requirements and current regulations, there may be many products that fall under existing classifications and existing requirements. However, because of the change and because of the fact that this is new and emerging technology, 
there may be some instances where they may classify products differently, or there might be additional or different requirements for certain products. But in any case, third parties and agencies have continued to issue guidance on the topic of nanotechnology, and they've been getting ready because more and more often these types of devices are going to be submitted you know, for clearance and approval. And it's great to see the concerted effort that bodies like the FDA and other certification bodies are making to ensure that there's a path of least resistance and that there are minimal barriers to entry to these types of devices while ensuring, of course, safety and effectiveness of these products that are coming into the market. So in my view, nanotechnology is one of the great modern discoveries in the world today. And it has an incredible amount of potential in the world of materials, the world of properties, both organic and inorganic polymers, materials, the ability to manipulate atoms and molecules. It can impact so many things in our life, including our clothing, the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat, paper, plastics, the ecosystem with trees and waters. Seemingly everything has a potential application. Now, it could be in 10 or 20 years that is part of treatment application in medical technology we may have little nano robots moving through our circulatory system treating different ailments that we have that may be a reality coming in the near future We've shown that the technology is there. The question is, are you ready for it?